Good day. The following presentation is going to cover how to add new life to old logs using Neurolog. We're going to look at this from two different perspectives. The first is if you are already a Neurolog customer and you use Neurolog to digitize. We're going to show how the Digitizing Quality Index can help you ensure quality digitizing before you spend the time and export out your digital data. The second thing we're going to look at is using that digital data, whether or not it was digitized within Neurolog or purchased from another vendor or digitized by somebody else, how the virtual light table, the on-the-fly curve edits, calculator, and interactive curve merge can help work for you. So here we have the Neurolog application. When Neurolog was first developed, it was primarily a digitizing package, but it's come a very long way. Now Neurolog can be used to uh, capture just calibrated rasters for use in other programs, you can straighten log images, and you can use it for interactive LAS curve editing. What we're showing you is our Neurolog wizard. You can set your project, you can digitize new, open existing, or edit uh, LAS files. We're going to open up a log that has already been worked on. So as we can see, we have a, kind of an ugly image here that we're working on. And on the left-hand side are all of our controls. So the very first one is where you would do a very simple raster calibration for export, and then the more detailed ones for use in digitizing. So what I'm doing here is I'm turning on all my curves just to see um, overall what's been digitized before I save it out. So when looking here, it looks like we have digitized all our curves, but before we export, we want to look at our digitizing quality index. Now the digitizing quality index covers two different levels of quality control. The first is very basic, which will look at your interval curve coverage, as well as to make sure that you've digitized or calibrated the log correctly. So in this beginning stage, if you look at the coverage, we show 98% for the SP, which will say looks okay right now. The R16, though, it's showing yellow, and it's showing 91%. So what we do is we use a color-coded system just in order to flag you a little bit um, easier. So in the R16, we'll take us to the bottom of the log, and what we see is that it's actually been calibrated down to the 2350, but the data ends earlier at 2280. So in looking at that, I can say that I'll accept the 91%, and by checking it, it means that I, as a user, have validated that data. So we'll just scroll through the rest of the curves, and they all look good. Now what we're going to look at is our depth grids and make sure that it was calibrated correctly. So we'll go back up to our first curve, and if we look over on the output, it shows that it's invalid. So we want to go and see what the problem is, so we'll hit to verify. It will actually scroll you to where it thinks the problem is, and in looking here, we see that there's an actually an extra grid line that was placed. So what we need to do is we'll highlight the grid and hit delete. Well, while we're here, what I've noticed is, actually, even though it showed 98%, it looks like we have a little bit missing at the end, so maybe I should have checked a little closer. But without any worries, all I need to do is I can quickly digitize the rest of the log. So by selecting the SP um, from the digitizing quality, it does enable that curve, and I can do my tracing. We support both auto tracing and manual when you get through some of the tough areas. So there, once we have it digitized, what we're going to do is we're going to look at a more detailed report. So let's go into our advanced features. Now in our advanced features, it actually goes through and it'll look at how the curve is overlaid on top of the image, as well as we can do a spike check and a gap check. So here you'll notice that it's finding 13 areas on the SP curve that it thinks it's not um, on top of the image. So what we'll do is we'll go through each one to test and if you look on the left hand side it actually highlights where it thinks there's a problem. Now if you see and you know visualize and look at it and see that there is a problem or the problem is okay then you just clear it. But as we see right here there's a place where the tracing got off and went on a grid line. 
So again, all we need to do is correct that area and clear the and clear the problem. So we'll go through each of the flags that it finds. Here it finds where it's going off scale, so it just wants to permit you to make a visual check. Now you'll notice after I've cleared them all out, our quality control and our coverage for the SP is now 100%. So before we go and look at our report, what the checkbox does, it goes through and it says that I have approved it as a, as a user, as a QC person, saying that I've looked at those curves. I can put in my name, say that it was validated by myself, and then I'm going to go into the detailed report. We cover both HTML text, but we're going to look at the nice HTML tech, or report. So here we get the report. As you see, we have a color rating legend, and so that's where we saw the yellow, the 91% before. So if something is what we believe 80% or lower, we will flag it in red, so that before you save it, you export out to a digital log, you can um, check the curve for further. So each of our processes are shown. You'll see whenever ever I checked a box, it says that yes, it was validated by myself, and um, all of my depth axes have uh, validated. All right, now that we know that we've looked at our report and we feel that our log has been digitized to you know the best of our ability, we'll close out of this and we're going to export to a digital log. And here you can set the name. We have the name of the image by default. You have curve output types. You have different LASs, tabbed, um, AutoCAD, etc. You can set your depth, your depth step, or sampling rate, and you can select which curves or all curves to export out. So here we have the exported curve data. It automatically sets it up from a template, whether or not you have a pre set up LAS template or it will do the best it can from how it was digitized. Now what we want to do here is we're going to use our virtual light table and it is just as that sounds. It brings in the image below your LAS file so that you can line it up and check your data. Since this one was digitized in Neurolog, we actually try and line it up um, the best we can. So as you can see, I can move my image below to help line it up. So I'll just move the image up and around so I can kind of match on my curve. And so what we see here is what we need to do is um, our tracks are not set up quite correctly. So I can turn on my scaling tool and I can just you know manually grab the side and see how my LAS file automatically uh, redesigns itself to overlay the image correctly. So now that's there, let's scroll everything back up to the 1500. So I'm going to go to depth and that will bring my LAS file to that spot on the image where I clicked. Okay, things are looking a little bit better, but our vertical scaling is a little bit off. So all we have to do is exactly what we did before. And so we'll bring it up a little and it will instantly re-evaluate um, and fix our LAS grid. So once we have everything set up correctly, you can automatically scroll or move yourself down the log and anytime you need to adjust the image, you can just grab it and move it. Um, obviously the image is an imperfect file and we've corrected it back to a perfect vertical uh, scaling uh, that was based on the calibration that was done on your Neurolog file. Now, since we did our digitizing quality index, our image is actually, our, our tracing was actually all spot on. But if you did need to edit it, all you have to do is unlock the curve and you can see that it can be edited in real time. So what we want to do next is we want to save out our edited LAS file. So we'll just do a file save as. We have the same features. We'll go ahead and say that it's edited can set your interval and do everything that you did before. So you'll notice now that we have our edited file. Now what we'd like to do is we have another run of information that we want to merge it to. So here's our edited file and let's browse for the other run. 
Now what happens is when you're merging the curves, it opens them both up at what the natural splice point would be. As you see in the merge parameters, it shows your two files, who the primary is, and it shows your splice location. So what I want to do is when I select the curve, we see the line here, and I can actually grab it and move it up, and you see how the virtual curve would draw once they're spliced together. And so it shows curve from one on the other. And so what we're going to do is go through each curve. You can either select it on the dialog or you can select the curve directly on your LAS image. Now the other thing you'll notice is the R32 um, curve is grayed out. Well what that's telling you is that the R32 only exists in one of my logs. It doesn't exist in the other. So as you see, you see the splice column. It's highlighted in yellow and as each of them were changed, so now they have different values. Merge the files. We automatically put merged on it. Set the interval. You can uh, save out all or none of them. The other thing I want you to know is this data that you have, you can actually look at the text file, the LES file, and we write out the merged intervals that are there, which is a part of the LES file. Now one last thing we'd like to do is we're going to use the curve calculator and we want to create a V-shale curve from our SP. Neurolog um, supplies or is shipped with uh, multiple you know, preloaded uh, formulas and calculations for the standard curve calculations. Any of these can be edited um, and you can also uh, add your own custom equations. We have existing variables, we also have existing sub-equations, and you can add any of your own. In addition, we also have the test equation syntax. So if you are typing your own or you're editing, you can test it before it goes out. Let's go ahead and calculate the curve. And so what comes up is your LES display. We'll see that the V-shell was calculated, but let's go ahead and change the color. And then we could change the scale if we needed, but the 0 to 1 looks okay. So now what we've ended up is we see our red V-shell curve that's on here. So we've been able to show you from beginning to end how our data, how data is accurate with Neurolog. And the reason it's accurate is if you're digitizing within Neurolog, you can use the digitizing quality index to check your calibration accuracy and curves for completeness. And then you can also use the virtual light table for your digital uh, logs to overlay that LAS file on original image to correct problems real time without having to start all over. When purchasing any Neurolog product, including Neurolog, training and cons training, consulting and support are also a big part of it. We do have a new training center in our Neurolog office in Houston, as well as you can schedule your own on-site training with customized classes using your data. We have a very dedicated support team that's available by phone, email, and online. Thank you very much for watching the presentation. Please take a look at our website and see if there are any other products that you are interested in and we'd, happy, we'd be happy to show you that presentation as well. Thank you.